Welcome back to Black Cat Crypto Club. My name is Drake, and I have a special guest all the way up here in the potato fields of Idaho from New Mexico. Where at in New Mexico? I'm in Jemez Springs, just outside of Los Alamos. Okay. So this is Andy Mickle, a longtime friend of mine, um, and just got into crypto in December after years of me badgering him about it wish i had a friend that <laughs> told me about cryptocurrency <laughs> 10 years ago <laughs> 10 years ago yeah man i remember uh you talking about cryptocurrency so long ago that even looking back now it was like what what is he even talking about <laughs> and and why would i you know and i think that definitely in that time it was like having extra money to put into something like that just was crazy to me yeah. to, to gamble like that but looking back it's like you knew what we all didn't know well yeah i i mean the minute i read the white the white paper for bitcoin it was just like it was it was a an aha moment for me it was just like whoa well, I'm going to tell you this could change everything. And so that's actually what I kind of wanted to get into first is like, I think you initially got into it as an investment and I, I can kind of, you know, that's how I kind of have to sell it. I think that's the way most people are going to come into it as like, okay, this could be worth more tomorrow, but it's so much more than that. And I think you've gotten to that point. Um, but was it an aha moment for you or was it kind of a process? Well, I can tell you, even as far down the rabbit hole as I've been in such a short time, I just barely read the white paper. And I need to tell you, that's where you and I are different. Yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> I, I, there's, it's only, a, what, 11 pages? It's not uh, much yeah, there. like nine pages. Or Once something. it started to get into the mathematics and stuff, like it just was, it's still over my head. I understand. Yeah why they made it i understand and i say they will say he made it you Satoshi. know Satoshi. <laughs> i i believe that there had to have been multiple great minds and there had to have been you know some rigorous testing off of chain or off offline you know so i say they because it's just too good but i didn't understand the white paper <laughs> I probably never will be able to like conceptualize the whole thing. So even when I read the white paper, it wasn't like, oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah, right. that, that right. thing. Um, but being in it and digging into it and seeing why they made it, you know, with the crash of 2008 and saying we deserve something better than what we're getting. Right. So the principle was there. And that's that's kind of where I was coming from is like I was primed for Bitcoin. like you know several years before i started learning about the federal reserve and our money system and just the abuse of power in our money system so when i got into it that was it was just like a light bulb for me but so i don't know when did the light bulb come on for me i think that's <laughs> yeah yeah i think that's really the question cuz i think there's so many reasons to get into this and so many reasons to stay into this. And yeah, it started with Bitcoin go up. Right. And um, I want to say that just hearing about the counterculture of people that wanted to have an even and fair money, an honest money, and, and not have permission for me to send you money. Um, I think that's was probably the aha moment of, oh, wait, first of all, I'm opting out of a currency that is just getting inflated. You know, we, we know that they manipulate the money, but to what degree? I didn't seriously know until I started down this rabbit hole. And then kind of as I continued on, it it's just been a steady build, you know, a little snowball of like, aha, you know, many layers of aha moments. Yeah. And um, I would say definitely the peer to peer 
transacting permissionless, honest, and seeing that, oh, you mean we can we can track every single transaction? You know, if there's only so many coins, we can see from the beginning where they are. We yeah, where it's honest. Gone. Yeah. Yeah. Transparent. So I guess, you know, I honestly I can't kind of remember a lot of our conversation there uh, there's a few points in when i was kind of talking bitcoin to you and you know kind of selling it to you since last was it august yeah we went uh we went biking and i remember when we were coming home from biking we had a pretty decent crash in bitcoin that day and i i bought back in a lot uh, quite a bit that very next day and I think I had kind of started talking to you about it because of all of that. But the ETFs were on the horizon. So that was like big news that was coming out. And I'm sure I talked a bunch about that and how BlackRock was getting into it and how number was going to go up. Um, but I don't really remember if I really got into like the ideological kind of stuff with you before that. I know I kind of did show you. There was a uh, Natalie Burnell video about her talking about how it's it's the currency of peace. You know, you're, you're not going to be able to have your, your money inflated away when they decide to put a war on the balance sheet of, of the Treasury. Um, so I know I kind of threw a, a few sprinklings of things in there. Um, but just tell me... Uh, tell everybody kind of your journey thus far into crypto and some of the things that you've realized and experienced from doing. Yeah, it's it's been a really entertaining journey for me, but I think it starts long before my initial investment. I didn't, I got way more than I bargained for coming into this space. And I would have to date this back to, you know, times of just being like, something's not right you know and it's that grind that never-ending grind that you know 40 50 60 hour weeks i mean working out in the oil field and, and and making as much money as possible to try and get ahead of you know life and make changes for myself and so eventually i think my system just started to push back and say buddy like you need you need something something's got to change because if you keep doing this forever like how, how are you going to sustain? And I think I've had a massive journey into mental fitness, physical fitness. And once I kind of got, you know, some things established that way, it was like, okay, I need to work on my financial fitness. And I think a lot of these things are a work in progress. You know, I will forever work on those things. But I got to a point where some of those were on autopilot. And um, I wanted somewhere to store my money. And so it started with um, a simple CD. And right. when, I remember you telling me about that. Buddy, to put <laughs> that kind of investment into a CD and after a year later, look at it and be like, you know, this that didn't do didn't much do for much. me. <laughs> but then also understanding inflation and realizing that's, I lost buying power. That's what I was going to say. You know, you probably, you were in a, a CD for what five percent? Four point two, and when you get into the weeds, it really yielded maybe two point something. Really? Yeah, it didn't yield me much, so but it was very that, secure. Yeah, you did lose. I did lose. <laughs> well, and two, you know, with three point nine percent inflation, which is what we've done the last year, basically. Right. If you're only doing two percent that wasn't that wasn't doing anything but i remember that conversation and how you were saying you were gonna you were gonna pull some of your money out of the cd and you wanted to do something else and you maybe you'd put a little bit into bitcoin and if it went up 10 percent over the year or so that would and, be I, cool. and that would be great and i uh i kind of laughed <laughs> i i at least i laughed inside and i was like 10 percent 
Bitcoin's going to do a heck of a lot more than that. And it has since you've gotten in. Well, yeah, for sure. So, But it took a bit to get in. And I think it's fair to back up a little bit before because okay. I was certainly apprehensive coming into cryptocurrency at all because right. of the phone call that I made to you saying, Drake, like I need some guidance here. And I just, I think that it's so important, you know, it, for me being a new investor in this space with the lesson that I learned to share that to other newer people that may may key in on some of these things but with upcoming abundance comes predators and so right. you know while i was on my travel you know you know self discovery and and all of that stuff i i was like hey i've got a little bit of of money to that i can risk and i risked it and i um was investing with somebody that i didn't know and um everything looked so good i mean it was just a small investment to begin and we start doing these trades where you know they completely mirrored the market and these other apps but at the time it was like what was the difference between coinbase and this other app where all of the charts look exactly the same and they created a a mirror image of everything that you would see to be legitimate and right. and then all of a sudden we start making money and we start making more money and all of a sudden things are looking better and better and better and and then i made the mistake of I mean, initially, my mistake was not calling you and saying, hey, you know, hindsight 2020, right? But I, I was only working with a little bit and all was going well. So let's see what this thing can do. And I threw more money in. Right. And it started to smell. <laughs> not yeah. Good. So, yeah. That's so I got scammed. Unfortunate. I got sure. scammed and that hurt so bad. And that, you know, really kind of came to an end in about March of the previous year, or, you know, I guess the year that I invested, which was 2023. Right. And, you know, calling you up and saying, bro, I think I made a big mistake. And you immediately hopped into action, helped me look into what was going on and how to verify these things. You know, you've been in this space so long. And, and I think it was like right then, like, how did I not do this before I was in trouble? And so ashamed and so bummed, you know, it's like, People can take advantage of your kind nature. And that was just a classic case of like the most expensive lesson I've ever learned in my life. And it was sure. really, 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 really shitty. And so to fast forward talking in August, even even in August, you know, Bitcoin was what, $25,000 a coin. And, yeah, and exactly. It, it, well, you said even back then, I still think you should be in cryptocurrency. I'm like, are you, are, you, are you out of your mind? I just got scammed so hard. I'm so ashamed. Like, I had to go lick my wounds for a while. But yeah, then yeah. I knew that if I was going to get into this, I had to educate myself. And at that time in August, I was thinking, yeah, I'll play with a, a little amount to, you know, just, you know, 10%. That'd be cool to make back. That would be cool. And as I started to learn and you shared more stuff, you know, it really wasn't anything that you shared other than I needed a store of my money and I knew that I needed to do something with it. And it kept coming back to cryptocurrency. So really, which is kind of crazy is again, was it was like you rebuild that faith in me and what we were doing and what you were doing. And, and I went in and it started small, just like the other time, but you know, I had learned a tough lesson. And so um that knowledge base and knowing why i'm in it just i had all of the motivation at that point to learn as much as i could as fast as i could and so i just started mainlining yeah everything podcasts books yeah you know. you've you've jumped head first into it ever since like you've gone uh full steam into yeah. into educating yourself on on so many aspects like you you definitely know more than i do in certain sp spots of it Crazy. And you've yeah, only exactly. been in it since december so it's it's a big success story for me to to yeah. have gotten you into it because a lot of people you know get into it as that investment and that's about as far as they really go with it and they don't really get in and learn about 
what the technology actually can do. So seeing somebody that has actually jumped in and done that is just awesome. And, Dude, and cheers to that. You yeah. Know, it cheers to that because what I needed is what I think a lot of people need. And that's somebody that they trust to show them the ropes, especially right. today. You know, you know, you've been in since 2012 and I'm going to tell you, like, you and I are very disconnected from where I am in my um, perception of this whole thing and what you've already been through and seen. And so really, you know, you're a crypto warrior. I'm out here being a crypto puppy. And so um, having somebody that I trust basically sit back and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I wanna tell like these other people too, anybody that's watching like, bro, you have rolled up your sleeves and answered so many of my questions. And I think that there's really not too many people that you wouldn't take the time because of what this is and what this can be for people and how beautiful this is. It's like, I love sharing this information because I've seen the light just as you've shown it to me. And you've, you basically baby fed me to the point, <laughs> which really what you did was you gave me my own fishing pole and right. I started catching my own. Yeah. Fish. And, and that's, I remember kind of, you know, sitting down with you and and thinking, you know, it's amazing that you would come back from getting taken so hard and come back to the same industry, basically, and kind of go for another chance in the same year. Yeah, which is crazy. But I, I really did try and like kind of assuage your fears with, yes, you trust me as a friend but you don't have to trust me that's the beauty of crypto you don't have to trust anybody that you don't want to trust really well a big thing what it there too is that you didn't have a lot to gain from me coming into this space yeah like think about i mean i can think back to like my friend selling me multi-level marketing early 2000s and you know it's like everything bi i think bitcoin comes off as that sometimes well, especially with the passion that people, people the way yeah, they speak for sure of. And, sure. you know, you introducing me to this the way you did, it was like talking about, hey, this is why I feel comfortable doing what we're doing. And that, I think, is understanding the cycle, which essentially is, you know, kind of knowing that the code is written in a certain way, which causes this volatility because a lot of new people are like, A, I don't understand it. So they're scared of it. Right. And and they don't really have the time to invest. At least they don't think they do, because from where I sit now, this is going to be a fat part of the fabric of a lot of a lot of technologies moving forward, a lot of um, familiar things. But it's it's as you familiarize with it and you see it for what it is. The light bulbs start coming on and really. You know, especially with new people that ask me, um, because people are fascinated with it. Because now it's it's on the news. It's, yeah. When you were telling me about it before, with... nobody had ever I'd never heard of it before. Before, you meaning last year? No, I'm talking or twenty like ten years ago or whatever. Yeah, 2014, yeah, yeah. 2013, You know, in those Defin times where... definitely nerds like me <laughs> in, in in our mom's basement, like Peter Schiff likes to believe. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I think just to say to people that are new to this space is, first of all, um, you know, this quote really changed my life. And Denzel Washington said, uh, if I hang out in the barbershop long enough, I'm bound to get a haircut. And this is the perfect um, example of if I just stay in this information, the pieces of the puzzle will kind of come together and I'll begin to understand it. And what's crazy is people are like, I don't understand this. And I'm like, well, you do me a favor and you tell me how to understand your dollars, how to understand, you know, uh, the treasury and the fed and their relationship to how that affects our dollar. And, and the, I see the yeah, gloss over. Yeah. And I say, I can explain this to you a million times easier than I can explain that to you. And I'm still waiting for somebody that says, this is actually how um, the US dollar works. 
between right. loaning our own money and printing more money and <laughs> it it's it's yeah try and figure that it's that opaque out. on purpose yeah i believe yep for sure um which kind of leads me to and we kind of talked about this earlier but um i've heard mark yusko uh say that you know in the future you know a lot of people it's it's a complete mind shift so you're going from traditional finance to this new foreign way of doing finance and that's where you get the that mentality of i don't get it and so i just i'm too scared to test the waters out but mark yusko kind of you know says that you know in the future it won't it, it'll be like the traditional finance where you don't need to know how it works you don't need to know you won't need to know how mining works or anything about the internals of bitcoin or cryptocurrency all you'll have to know is this thing in my phone if i scan it i get soda right you know yeah. and and that's just all you'll have to really know um so the more and more advanced we get i think the easier it's obviously going to be for people to come over but but it's going to be as simple as when you first heard about the internet right and now it is integrated into the next generation's life where they don't know anything different right you know once you know once you start talking about tokenizing your identification and not having a wallet you know i would be i would not be surprised if my um 13 year old niece actually didn't have you know that's only a couple years away actually have a physical identification but we're not far from using this blockchain technology to simplify so many things and i think it's relevant to say that when it's better easier and makes more sense it just makes more sense and I think a lot of us can agree that, yeah, it would be really rad to be running around in electric cars and flying cars, but until it replaces, you know, it's, it's easier to conduct business in having an electric car, it's cheaper, it's more efficient, it goes further than, you know, I think until those things have, have proven to a lot of people that it is better, right? it's going to take a little bit of time. However, you know, back to a lot of things that you talk about in your podcasts, uh, because you're a podcaster. <laughs> I need, I, hey, I need your, I need, I need. Define podcast, because I, I don't need, even know what that means. Exactly. I wanted to call you out to your own fan base. Like, I've been telling this, my, my brother Drake, have you listened to this podcast? Oh, that's right. You don't listen to podcasts. Man, you know what? It's just interesting okay you i'm are, a podcaster the, you, you are out here doing I'm the a podcaster thing. that doesn't know what a podcast is i don't know what that says about me but hey i also don't know i don't know unfortunately <laughs> i can't tell you the difference between the two either you're a youtuber <laughs> without a doubt and i'm somebody who listens to a lot of pod podcasts that i've never actually done you know uh online interview so hey <laughs> what, what do i know um where were we my brother i don't know but um earlier i think earlier today you were kind of hitting on um replacing you know I identity and whatnot i was going through my wallet earlier today and literally just about everything in my wallet i think will be replaced digitally and will just be held in my phone in my phone wallet eventually um the one thing that i had never thought of when I was kind of going through my wallet though was credit cards and how those could be digitized into blockchain basically. And I think it can happen, but it's just something I've never really considered before. But isn't that one of the things we're solving here? Yeah. Is that, hey man, if we're transacting, because I mean, <clears throat> how many people are using Apple Pay to transact they're transacting with their phone anyway they're not even having a physical card right this is essentially uh you know the the difference between transacting with your credit card and using that system in comparison to um cryptocurrencies to me looks like you know if if my money's being held in you know a bank then it's 
susceptible to inflation and whatever amount of money in there is worth less and my buying power is worth most now so i better spend all my money but also in the transaction fees you know matter of fact today got me good because i'm still using debit cards you know to transact um and for the record you know for me right now i'm using cryptocurrency as store of value you know, I'm not transacting with it regularly, and I'm sure it's not far from the time where I make that transition. However, um, I was at the gas station. I swiped my card for two dollars and seventy five cents for a water, and they're like, "Well, there's a minimum of three dollar, three dollars." So here's this Cadbury egg. I'll just throw that extra dollar on there. So they got me in buying an extra something I didn't need, mm-hmm. so that I could make this transaction. So microtransactions in cryptocurrency, I think, is really fascinating. Um, something we can maybe briefly touch on because I think that's part of this culture and this wave of where we're going that I think is gorgeous. But really, more than anything, is that when you swipe that card and you get tagged with that transaction fee of what two to four percent every time you swipe your card. So every one of your transactions, it's like not only are you paying taxes on it, but just to be able to use Visa, MasterCard, whatever, they're going to take their cut. And I it like talk about a paradigm shift when I was like, imagine me the raise an entire country would get at 3%. How much how much money is that? Back to the people. Billions. An insane uh, amount of money. I think I think credit cards break in uh the the market for that was like fourteen billion dollars last year. Back to the people. Is that w- worldwide? I I don't know. It's been a while since. It would be a I've fun metric, it, but because but it's just going up. And, like and, in the next three years, it's almost gonna double. Is what they project. So perfect. It's they're, just they're gonna push people just, into cryptocurrency. <laughs> yep. Yep. It's one of the small things so, that as I learn these things and the amount of like i said like aha moments that it built you know that one was huge it's so small but it's so big yeah yeah and visa knows it they're they're trying to pivot as hard as they can to stay relevant in transaction uh processing they've they've been testing out with solana and several other um things so it's it's good for crypto because it's going to bridge you know our old system to this new system uh and it's good for them in that they're they're trying to pivot but once we pivot far enough they're they're going to be completely irrelevant i think so i don't know hey if anything you know people coming into this space stabilizes networks it it votes towards the legitimacy of what we're doing and you know hey the day that we can which i i know that we're, we're we can do now everyday transacting in in cryptocurrency and not getting chopped at, at the knees yeah. you know every time we go to spend our money that's hard earned is, right it's huge yeah definitely so um when you since you've gotten into crypto um for people that haven't made that jump yet what would you say was the like the hardest thing the most complicated or like you know the the toughest uh hurdle to get over dude that's a great question um because everybody new to this that's fascinated by it they have their reservations and i think that a lot of them are it comes down to you know knowing um what it is knowing why you're getting into it and knowing how to get into it and and those things are actually very simple when you break them down and for me that's it you know i got into it for dollar go up for cryptocurrency go up right you know because right. I, because i was coming from the dollar Right. right and that right. and i've had a paradigm shift there as well you know uh man michael saylor buddy such a cool guy 
buy your Bitcoin. Hold your Bitcoin. Hold it as long as you can. And don't sell your Bitcoin. <laughs> right. Okay, so um, knowing why, why do I want to use this? Um, and for me, um, I wanted a store of value. Of course, it would be nice for it to go up. So at that point, what am I getting into? Uh, stocks, bonds, S&P, um, CDs, IRAs. What am I going to do with this? And the percentages are always so low. And you're over here, you know, the devil on the other side of the shoulder, like, just look at what this, this asset has done comparative to all of these other asset classes. And I'm very um, risk averse. So it's kind of crazy to see what I'm doing now. Right. And that, you know, I think gold is really fascinating. But then as I learn more about it, like what, how does, how does Bitcoin compare to these other things? And so, you know, how does Bitcoin compare to gold? Well, you know, big, um, gold has been something that has a great track record. It, um, it's slow and steady. I like that. But does it make sense for me? You know, I'm kind of nomading right now. So I don't want, do I want to be carrying around gold with me everywhere? Right. Um, and then as you compare it to Bitcoin, it's like, well, I can transact anywhere in the world in a matter of minutes. You know, how can I get this gold to South Africa? Will it make it through customs? Nope. <laughs> Will it even make it there? How much right. money is it going right. to cost to ship this asset to, you know, and so there's these little things where, you know, it kind of. You can't load your suitcase with a bunch of gold and hop onto a plane. Well, then I'm paying even more you know, money to that for sure. To because uh, I'm going to be over that fifty pound limit pretty soon. <laughs> you no, know, you know, so um, and then there's so many things about the S and P and stocks and bonds that I don't understand. And yeah, it's like it... buying into a company. If if I were to choose a company, how much do I need to learn about that company to have faith in what they're doing is a the right thing, b going to make me money, and really most important to me is are are they honest or are they making it so that their number on wall street looks fantastic that's that's exactly it you have to you have to trust a lot of people whether it be in bonds or stocks you either have to trust the ceo the employees the company or with bonds you're trusting the federal reserve and the treasury and so it's, it can be so easily manipulated and overwhelming. And that's, know? yeah, that's what a lot of people don't realize that about Bitcoin is like how unmanipulated, unmanipulated the, the network and the system really is. Yeah. And we can get into the how, right? We can, we can send that into the how, but we, you know, back to this, right, this right. why, why Bitcoin and, um, you know, comparing it to all of these other things. Even still, I look, I look back at like, I'm glad I am where I am because it's something that isn't too, too terribly hard to understand comparing to all of these other things, you know, you could spend, you know, a thousand hours or 10,000 hours researching a company or, you know, what kind of bonds are going to, and at the end of the day, the yield is so low. I'm just trying to really, now that I learn and understand I'm outpacing, I'm just trying to outpace inflation, right? I'm trying to at least maintain my buying power. And the fact that I don't own a house currently means that, you know, we're going to have to tack that 15% that that housing market is adding on top of their, so, you know, their, their in, inflation metric of CPI that is also manipulated. So back to the why I want to be in, in something like this is, is because, you know, the cycle of grinding to my grave and not having my own time freedom is why Bitcoin. It's for me, this is like a, a freedom tool. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And for me, I don't need to be rich, but I want to be wealthy in my own time. And so this kind of goes back to actually kind of the culture that I'm talking about or or why I'm so passionate about it. It wasn't just Bitcoin go up. It's freedom from kind of a broken system that now because the more I learn about Bitcoin, actually, the more I learn about the, the system that we're in and what 
was probably one of the biggest paradigm shifts for me is seeing how manipulated the dollar is and why they're manipulating it and how that manipulation actually affects the entire world. And I choose, it's either A, what I'm used to and what I'm familiar with, and that happens to also be highly manipulated that isn't really meant for somebody of the middle class to you know, propel myself forward. It's actually by staying in this, doing less for me, or do I choose this other option that is transparent, and we can see all the transactions. It's, um, I don't need permission to send you money. You know, how, you know what the, the, the marker's $10,000 that they're going to send that to the government that this dude's doing something? You know, because in 1971, this was like, a, like an actual wage for somebody for a year, but we just didn't <laughs> account for inflation conveniently. Yeah. Now $10,000 buys you a candy bar, and you have to report that directly to the irs anytime right. you buy anything ten thousand yeah. dollars right so it goes back to i don't need to have permission to to own my own money and spend my own money i love the fact that you know in this banking system um i'm paying them to hold my money so not only is it getting inflated but i'm also lining people's pockets other than my own just to have you store it so that I can, you know, how many, um, in, you know, I, I know there's a lot of people that will relate to this, but it's like the fees, if you don't have this much into an account and the fees, if you don't do this and the fees, if you want to do that and the fees to end of the day, I just need someone to hold on to my money because that's what we've done because taking all of these dollars and stuffing them under my, it's just not as secure. So at right. the end of the, like right now I see, cryptocurrencies as, as better as more secure simpler more secure so you're you it's funny because when you said you were risk averse um you know a lot of people think crypto is really risky and there are some things that are especially some cryptocurrencies the further you go down that list gets pretty risky but there's a there's also kind of a counterpoint with with especially bitcoin where it's almost more secure and less risky to self sovereign your own wealth than let somebody that you don't know hold your money hold your money man <laughs> This one hits really close to home to me because what I went through in this space. And I'm telling you, I nobody beats themselves up harder than I can. I made a huge mistake. And so part of this goes into the how. And that is uh, you know, learning how to to get the coins, what to do with the tokens, how to store those tokens. And for me, this is something I'm very passionate about. And that's to secure your coins. And how to do that is not that technical. And, you know, I, I think I would be happy to go into some of that. But yes, man, um, it is, I feel way more secure. I know where my tokens are. I know how much they are. I, um, I like, I like self-sovereign holding my, my asset, my money, my, I like it this way. It's different. It's definitely, you know, for somebody that's brand new coming into the space, it's a nail biter. You know, I don't think, <laughs> I don't think you can be a crypto warrior and still not get a little nervous when you send, when you're sending, when money. you're transacting this way. But there are a lot of ways to mitigate not only the risks, but also to, um, you know, the technology is going to get better and it's going to improve. Right now, it is what it is, and I, and it's good. But I think it's going to get simpler. But really, um, holding your own crypto assets um, is just a matter of knowing what's available, what works for you, how much are you investing as to how far down this rabbit hole. And by all means, I, I think I've done it, my homework on this 
this is actually one of those areas where I think you know a whole lot more than I do. So let's go into this a little bit more. You run your own node yes. for Bitcoin. So why don't you tell us a little bit about that, why you would run your own node, like what, uh, what the benefits are and kind of what it took to get into doing that. Okay. You know, really for me, because of my history, I chose to hire a cyber security professional. And that's the Bitcoin way, you know, and um, the reason, one of the biggest reasons I trust going into this space is, you know, Natalie Brunel puts her stamp on it. Safe Dean Amos puts his stamp on it. You know, he's, I, I've listened to Tony get interviewed, you know, by Safe Dean himself. And I was like, I liked what he was doing. I set up the, um, the consultation and just heard what he was about and what they do. And to be fair, like it is, it is a reasonable investment to have them set you up. And so part of their, what they think the best way to do this is to, to run your node, which um, I think probably a lot of people that don't even know what a node is. And to me, running a node, the biggest reason I love running a node is being a person that helps secure our network. So therefore, if the internet goes down in China, when they come back online, I have a list of all the transactions and they pull straight from, from my information of the most recent. And the same goes for if I lose connection to the internet for any amount of time, I come back online, my node downloads the rest of the ledger and and I'm back in that. So So being a part of this and being somebody that helps secure this to me is, is everything. Why do I want to hold a node? But, you know, through their education to me is that, you know, I'm actually um, certifying all of my own transactions. So it's actually less, um, it, it's kind of a way of, of being more secure or rather kind of like dusting your footprints on blockchain and just having less intermediaries. Uh, to transact. So getting into the weeds with that, there's a lot of stuff that I really, it's, it's still above my head. There's yeah, it's technical. It's technical, for sure. but, um, <clears throat> but the way that they set me up for being able to secure my assets, but just as important to be able to pass that off to my family, you know, in case of a catastrophe, they have done a really good job. And, you know, it's, 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 kind of creating like a layer, you know, a, a, just an additional layer of security where I was able to pass off all of my information to my family member. And even still, there's one more layer that she doesn't know that she can get access to um, through my, um, what do you call that? My encrypted, on, my, uh, encrypted vault online. Okay, and so yeah. she's able to, if I pass request through my um, vault, when she has access to that, she has those two little magic words that lets her into everything. And so I think that's really sharp because for me, as, as much as I trust this person with everything I ever own, it's still I can sleep at night just in that there's still one more step for her to have my, my asset. And, right. and so that I think is sharp and it's not that technical, you know, at the end of the day, you know, um, sovereignty looks like this, you buy on exchange, you have a pit stop address, a hot wallet, off exchange, wallet. Off exchange yeah. wallet, right? So we don't want to leave our money on exchange. That's the biggest no, no in, in cryptocurrency. You, you learned the hard way several times several cycles we had mount gox was probably the first <laughs> uh and then we've had you know ftx celsius um genesis i mean all kinds of and let's get all, these, all kinds of lessons to be learned there let's get these players out of this game because yeah. it's right right now i think is a really beautiful time for people to get into this right because there aren't those unknowns. What if somebody... Well, get them out of the game, but also just don't give them the chance. You know, That's do it. what you got to do on, on a central exchange and get off. Yep. I hop <laughs> like, on exchange. I buy my asset. 
I send to a hot wallet. Um, that gives me address to my hot wallet. And then my hot wallet from there, I send to hardware. Having a, a quality hardware wallet is, um, you know, a cold wallet is kind of everything. Yeah. Um, and at the end of the day, that is, you know, I can't see it. I can't, I can't put it in my hand. Well, really in comparison again to the fiat currencies, like do you have all of your, your fiat money under your bed. Can you see it all? Right. Because they're just as digital as we are. Right. It goes into this hardware wallet and that I'm telling you helps me sleep at night knowing that I'm in this EAL six level security, EAL seven level security hardware that they say, you know, is the best that we have for today. Yep. And and really I guess just to say, you know, to you if you have anybody that reaches out that says, How do I secure my Bitcoin? and any of these people want to pick my brain i i feel so strongly about this and it's easy enough for me to explain to people would be happy to take any amount of time um and and to you know just to come back i guess i would have loved to have led with this is i love what you're doing i love that you're out here educating people about what this is and just as important as that you know the animal rights that you are supporting the i love the Man, I love the um, sanctuaries that you're highlighting. Um, I'm, I'm a big um, fan of animals myself. And I, as I grow in this space, it's, it's like, oh, the, the crypto gods gave to me. It's so easy for me to kick to these other people. So, you know, this could be a really interesting way for me to kind of also give back and contribute to, right. you know, this whole thing because I love what we're doing. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, takes me back to that uh, it was a tweet from Anatoly the Solana guy yeah. and he was saying you know you, you just made 20% off your coins this week pay it forward a bit you know do something do something good who's know? more in, uh, <laughs> just who's more deserving than some of these animals and what I love about a lot of these sanctuaries that you're highlighting is you can go straight to amazon and send them something it's not like your money's going in the ether right you know so you get yeah. people that are skeptical about well you know what what uh what um foundations are real and honest and when i'm when i'm sending a you know part of a chicken coop to people or or <laughs> right. Feed or right that is not you can't yeah you can't you can't drink that away or you know whatever right <laughs> so yeah yeah definitely some cool cool sanctuaries out there to, to support for sure um but going back to that your sparrow wallet yesterday you were kind of laughing about it you know being like this old tech kind of uh nokia phone looking thing um but it it, it occurred to me later it's like you know it's this whole new technological field brand new but it all runs on very pretty simple stuff. So like, you know, in the third world, you know, Nigeria and some of these places, all they really need is a, a phone with, they don't even need a smartphone. All you need is a phone with a camera and you can send and store money. Right. And I, as time goes on, it's so much easier for these third world countries to get a hold of tech, you know, yeah. um, through my time I spent in Thailand and Indonesia, like all of these Everybody people has. loves tech. They, you know, and, and they all have cell phones. They all have cell phones. Yeah. They yeah. all love tech. They all have cell phones. They all have pretty advanced phones, you know, sure. They're not, you know, the iPhone 15, right. But, but they, um, gosh, I was getting signal in Thailand in places that I would never get signal really in the united states never <laughs> like remote places so it's very important over there and it's only a matter of time before you know this is in everybody's hands which they also have a lot of motivation to get there sure they might have to who knows what their well, investment can be and that's that's another thing that's so cool about bitcoin is any other commodity you've got varying grades and in the third world, they kind of get a lower grade of whatever commodity, you know, gold, for instance, is not as pure, 
in these third world countries. It's um, and you know it just goes back to that that very homogenous how homogenous Bitcoin is. One Bitcoin in the U.S. is the same exact thing that you can buy in in the third world. So I think it needs to be said that right now bitcoin in our society is hard to it's hard can can be a hard sale to some people because you know what they're used to has been working and they've but it's huge in africa because now people don't actually have to have banks that couldn't have a bank account like, yeah anyway. they couldn't have a bank it's so much bigger <laughs> than yeah. even we can see because yeah. of the benefits that people are getting from using this network in some of the most remote places. I mean, the, uh, you know, um, right outside Malawi, there's a, a community that smart man decided to harness the rain because it's just a lot of liquid in this area, made themselves a little hydroelectric electric setup and turned around and powered 1400 people's electricity that they never had before we don't we don't see those you know that's not making headlines but when right. you start to dig past the surface of what this is doing globally is beautiful it's special and the fact that these people now have electricity for the first time and guess what it's free because they had so much extra electricity after they're running their mining setup that they gave back to their community yeah that's yeah, awesome that, that that is awesome uh yeah kind of goes against a lot of a lot of the bad news as far as was coming out especially last year you know we had a lot of people trying to um spread a lot of anti bitcoin propaganda and and the energy use which there is a lot of energy use to it but like you said there's there's things that are happening that we're growing are providing we're learning. and it, it you know it's providing different different services for different places too in some uh african cities it's stabilizing their grid and so yeah it's just it's always interesting for me to hear that kind of stuff but well and it's fun facts too a lot of people don't know about this stuff not headlines but right. i called my pal out in the oil field and asked him to verify like are you seeing um mining setups on well sites and he's like yeah there's a company out here that is that is doing this all over our region which if you are flaring off natural gas and burning it into the ether that's energy that is wasted but no like i get it like bitcoin's kind of mobile and you can move your mining station to those places and capture that energy but it amazes me that somebody hasn't learned how to harness that wasted energy before now. Well, right. I mean, and it just came down to just... the simple fact of, of shipping natural gas right. costs more than it was worth. Well, now it's staying on site. It's powering this little uh, shipping container. Mine they, th rig. they throw a satellite dish up on the top, right? <laughs> and we're now... It's wild. It's it's cool that we're so you've actually verified this yeah. with somebody. Oh, absolutely! That's, I was like, this is awesome. this is fascinating to me, and I worked in the oil field, so I'm like, what are we doing out there? And mm -hmm. when you take that a step further, look at economic growth because the money was generated kind of out of thin air because we're just burning off this energy anyway. So it was essentially free energy running into this mining rig. That if they you know sell off a block of of six point five. 6.25 how many how many coins block right now uh right now we just dropped to 3.2 3.125 okay per, per block. block yeah times 60,000 now $70,000 a coin back into our economy that was money that wasn't wasn't generated without somebody's you know yeah. genius way of harnessing that yeah energy. it makes me wonder you know how widespread that is with with oil but here your friend's saying that there a lot it's everywhere i think it's a big i deal. wonder how many people how many um how many outsiders they're letting into to harness that versus 
because I think Exxon is doing it themselves mm. um, and are mining Bitcoin themselves. So I wonder how many oil companies are actually doing it themselves versus kind of renting it out and more letting, fun facts to dig into. It, yeah, yeah, it'd be it'd be interesting to know for sure. That's that's awesome. I didn't know you had kind of gotten into that, but huh? So going back to um, you know December when I got you into to Bitcoin. How how's your I guess investing strategy or your investing plan changed? Evolved? Yeah. Yeah. You know, gosh, such good questions. It first started as I needed to store my money somewhere. I didn't know what it, what it was gonna do. And then you hear about all of these professionals in the space say, like, have a plan and stick to the plan because the volatility is wild which sure i might seem like a crypto puppy <laughs> but i feel these 30 percent drawdowns yeah I, you know yeah. i don't care who you are yeah you wake up and you see those spikes dipping hard oh, yeah. man it hurts so much so especially so, if you're looking at your balance you're looking at your your right wallet balance right not you just know. a red color and a yeah, dip yeah two percent two percent uh two two is a low number and then you see it in your your wallet balance and you're like i lost how much <laughs> right how much uh wealth today right so uh, yeah. it goes back so to this plan does... and how important this plan is so yeah. my plan was pretty loose starting in because i didn't really understand what i what you drug me into <laughs> <laughs> and and so now my my plan looks like this um i understand the cycle I understand what I hope to expect from this cycle. And because Bitcoin, it, people need to understand that in this code is 21 million ever. They're not going to inflate it. They're not going to deflate it. It's part of the programming to fix the problem is that because of the scarcity and how much I see this institutional wealth coming into the space and buying up all of this Bitcoin. I'm happy with what I have, but I want to have Bitcoin and I don't want to get rid of it because I worry that it'd be harder to get back in if I get out. And so that's so this cycle looks like this to me. Um, Bitcoin pumps. Altcoins follow. Once we hit what what I believe to be, you know, heading into crypto winter, whatever that may look like, I am comfortable and confident taking any old kind coins I'm in and just rolling it into my Bitcoin. I hold that through this cycle. And I want to hold, you know, for me, my plan is. So you're going to roll everything that you've invested so far all into Bitcoin. Yes. During the, the crypto winter. Yep. Okay. Yep you know, and I'm going to hold. So a lot of people see, you know, the four year cycle and I'm going to, I'm going to buy as low as I can and then sell at the height of this next, you know, whatever. Right. That's where I'm different from other people because I, I have my sights on like 2030. Like this is my first cycle. I want to, I want to run through two full cycles, seeing, you know, the history of Bitcoin and what it's done in its other cycles. I think two cycles for me, is enough time for me to really assess and make a new plan and but, then and then reassess at reassess. that point yeah. and go from there right and maybe things are at the adoption stage where you don't ever have to get out of bitcoin you can transact fully, in bitcoin only and... do what you need to keep what you're in in bitcoin and transfer what what you need to live out into usdc every once in a while and you know that, that's it yeah. that's that's the move it'll be interesting to see if we get to that that point where it's really easy to do that by 23 i think i think it's possible we i are... mean you can almost do it now i mean right. i i haven't really touched a dollar like i said you know outside of you know little things here and there i sold that guitar speaker just today and and got 100 
dollars of real actual dollars man did you feel like you needed to wash your hands afterwards <laughs> i do i do i need to <laughs> need to take a good hot bath that's so funny <laughs> I, i'm just not there yet i haven't <laughs> Um, you know, my whole thing is I'm, you know, what is in cryptocurrency stays in cryptocurrency and I hold the cryptocurrency. And so, you know, transacting it isn't, the, you know, why I have it. I know that that's possible. And I know that, that, you know, we can get there and that's awesome. So going back to you're rolling everything into Bitcoin. Crypto winner hits. We've talked about this a little bit yesterday, and I think we both came to the agreement that crypto winter this cycle very possibly may not be as bad as this these 70-80% crashes during crypto winter that we've seen in the past. Man, back to why I'm so grateful for you is you really have your thumb on the pulse you've been in this thing for a very long time and and i think that you have been a good predictor of other things but i'm bracing myself for that you for know, the 70 yeah 80 percent drawdown yeah and then when you yeah, said yeah. that to me and you look at what's happening in this space right now which is so rad you know we are a part of history we are witnessing you know the first time that we've really front run financial institutions into an investing you know an asset class that um, if we were in before them, them coming in only helps us. Right. Tell and me I, when that happens. Yeah. I don't know with, with, with the ETFs and everything going on politically now oh. with, with all of these new laws that are bracing, embracing cryptocurrency and the technology. I don't know. It, it I, I don't doubt that there's going to be a bear, uh, bear market um, because I think market set, uh, psychology is just too strong and those cycles are just too strong that obviously there's going to be people that are just planning on that and they're going to be exiting and there's going to be some some kind of drawdown there. But I just, with everything going on right now, it's hard for me to imagine a, a bear market like we saw last time with Terra Luna going under and Celsius and uh, FTX and just just getting hammered. Right. I just was... don't see how that can happen. I mean, it. I, the, I could be wrong. I just don't is, think it's going to be as big. There was a lot of negatives coming into that to that winter. Yeah. And there is only positives coming into, you know, crypto summer you know right. we'll see obviously what right. happens then because you know this moves so fast and i think um it's very easy to see looking around between ai robotics cryptocurrencies things like this that we are on the doorstep of a tidal wave of of tech and you know being ready for that and embracing it you know you you do have a choice Right. But again, coming back to if it makes more sense, it's easier to then, um, you know, you you embrace the change that's on the horizon and it'll be really entertaining to see what this winter brings. You know, I'm planning for what I'm planning for. I think, you know, until I see these cycles, until I really have lived through them. All I can do is just kind right. of cross some right. fingers. But, dude, when you said that to me yesterday. I was just like, you mean we might not have a radical winter, which, you know, I mean, I, I'm prepared for that, that 70 or 80 percent winter as well. I just am not so sure. And that's why I've changed my because if you asked me. A year, a year and a half ago, what my my strategy was, I would have said I'm. I'm going to time this cycle mm. and I'm going to trade it. I've heard you tell me that before. And now I don't, I can't bring myself to get out of Bitcoin. Uh, Kathy Woods, your predictions are insane. Let's just hold on for 2030. <laughs> uh, you know, um, but I'm also very, I tend to, I would rather err on the side of caution and, and just for say, sure. hey, 
you know what what this will be will be and holding through this cycle is what i will do right yeah for sure stick to the plan that's you know that's you what can, i'm doing you can get fudded out of this thing in a heartbeat yep yep and then you'll never you'll never have a chance to make it up sometimes so um so if we do go into a bear market and you've rolled everything you you have invested now into bitcoin what's your plan once we hit bottom are you gonna dollar cost average in okay. all the way down or are you okay. gonna wait to see where we go and maybe try and time the, that bottom and and get more into it or uh, yeah well, yeah i didn't finish my i guess i i missed part of my plan is that i dollar cost average now it, and it it, it really helps with the volatility when it's up. I'm so you're going to continue I, dollar cost averaging in? Not not during the dip. Is I will okay. take my dollar cost average and and leave it in the bank, right? Because if it's if it's dipping that once hard, it starts dipping, one, yeah, once it starts, or I feel like I have a handle on yes, this is what it's doing, then all of that dollar cost averaging will go because obviously it's going to dip faster than fiat currency, you know. So I will generally does. Yeah. Yeah. So I will take that, put it aside and wait for the time that I think that it's starting to Once grow again. Start seeing and I don't mind it, it starting, it. starting to, to go on the up before I come back in too. It's not like I'm like, oh, this, this is, this is the bottom. You well, know? you don't, with, with Bitcoin's volatility, that's the beauty of it. You don't have to really time it just no. very precise at all. And when like, you're talking about being in for cycles rather than days you know yeah. you don't yeah. have to time this thing you know i could come into it buy back in and it still dips a little more but when i'm looking at holding for another four years after that the four year you know understanding cycles of bitcoin and um and knowing that you know your plan should be to hold it through these things you know hold it you know at any time in bitcoin you buy low you buy high you hold four years, it's net positive, according to the history right. of this asset. And with that information, I think people need to be looking at four years when they come into this. At least, yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah. I yeah, your your strategy is interesting. I know a lot, I know some people who um dollar cost average in until until we get to that crypto summer where things just go parabolic and mm -hmm. go straight up and once we enter into that phase they stop dollar cost averaging at that point and then once we hit that top and start turning down that's when they start dollar cost averaging all the way down mm. and then all the way up and, and i respect two. that so, too which it's... yeah both ways work um especially if you consider you know that four-year term but well it's the scarcity thing right really the the move is have more Bitcoin now. <laughs> stack more stack, sats. Stack Satoshis, man. Yep. That's it. I like and so it. I respect that, but I think, you know, and we'll see when that time comes, but I think that that's what makes most sense to me today. Yeah. Nice. Well, I like it. Um, I know you wanted to kind of talk a, a little bit more about like have being responsible and having a plan is part of that. Uh, but just the responsibility in not uh, what you need to do to not lose your Bitcoin and be responsible enough to keep it. Um, and I know we we touched on some of this stuff in when we were talking about your node and things like that. But yeah. is there anything else you want to? I think we really did a good job of kind of going over, you know, what at least to new people, what it kind of looks like in a nutshell to um, custody your coins. However, I think it's a mentality that when you come into this, if somebody says to me, I want to get into cryptocurrency, goes into, I tell them, why do you want to get in, you know, find your why so that you stay in it. You know, what it is, what is it, you know, know what you're getting into. And then, and then how is, is right in that. And I think people that are coming into this space need to take the steps even before getting in so that when you are transferring tokens your system is in place and it's not that technical 
but it is your responsibility. And that's what I w couldn't express more to people is that it, it, this is the ultimate responsibility because you don't have a bank that if something bad happens that they're going to support you. You send too many tokens to the wrong address, they are gone. So getting set up, uh, which means basically uh, setting up your, your account with Coinbase or wherever your on-ramp would be, and then having your off exchange all set up before you even get in. So Absolutely. That's what you're saying. Yeah. So knowing what exchange you're going through, having your hot wallet, wallet set up, already having your hardware, hardware wallet on the ground, you know, in your hand, ready to, um, you know, go through those steps to turn it on and, and, um, you know, knowing how you're going to secure your keys, knowing what keys are, you know, that's the key to your castle, knowing what um, these seed phrases are and these keys. And knowing how important it is to keep that information. That's it. That is the deal same. right there is, is with, you know, this responsibility is knowing what keys are. How are you going to store them? Because if you write them on a piece of paper and it gets wet, she gone. Yeah. You, a fire happens and it gets burned up. It's gone. Right. And man, the story you hear about that, that cute little family that, you know, honey, I got some good news and some bad news. The good news is I put all of our savings in cryptocurrency. Bad news is, oh, and it's worth $75 million. <laughs> the bad news is I don't know how to access it. And that's so heartbreaking. Yeah. So knowing on that, before you take that step, what that looks like and having your plan in place. And that's something that I'm very passionate about, willing to help, willing to instruct and show, because there's a lot of different ways to store these keys. And you just need to look at them and say, this what makes sense to me. And this is how I can do this. You know, for me, it's as simple as I have my own keys and I have somebody else that has a copy of my keys. So therefore, if I need to recover my stuff, I can go to that person and get that information. And then just as important is this is how you access my stuff when the time comes if something happens. So setting up and knowing what you're getting into and how to pass that along to somebody else kind of is where things can get just a little bit more technical because it's like my setup solid. Right. Handing it to somebody is a little bit of, of a mouthful. So I did you know, weeks and weeks of, of, of understanding the best way, you know, the simplest way for myself and the simplest way to hand it off. But it also goes even a step further. Like what is your actual digital footprint look like? What are you out doing on the internet spending, you know, as all of your passwords in your password manager on your, your, your Google Chrome and your right. And it's, so it's all of my passwords are just password. Is that, is that that's secure. Oh, oh, that. oh, 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 well, so I'm going to start changing. Yes, I'll have to change it to password one. one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, uh, you know, assessing on the front end what what your digital life looks like now, because if we're entering into a space of holding on to my assets and I'm and now a digital human, I think it's really important to assess what you've done. Maybe you need to undo some of those things moving forward. You know, something I did was, you know, hey, I've got one password for more sites that I care to admit because I just, it was just convenient for me to get into this these. How you remember. But I've yeah. created a new system that's very simple. It's actually just as easy to use as it was before. But I'm confident, you know, if you get into my, you know, backcountry.com account and buy yourself some stuff, you're not going to turn around and get into my other right like you 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 may breach one of them right good luck breaching all of them right you know so it's just i feel so much better about it so it's it's kind of making a plan and to knowing somebody man i had you to really help me understand this stuff yeah and then i took it a bit further and said okay because of my history in this space brother i can't i can't f this up again i right. can't and so uh, it is your responsibility to understand what you're getting into, how to get into yeah, it. Because you don't have 
Bitcoin customer service. No. That's going to be able to unlock your coins if you lose your keys. Like, right. this is all on you. So it is a lot of responsibility. And what's cool is we're in a time where most people probably know somebody that's mentioned Bitcoin before. So use your network. You know, reach out. If you know somebody that's already in this space and you want to get into this space, sometimes having a friend to help guide you is all you need. Yeah. Because it's not as technical as people make it out. Right. I think we were talking earlier and you were saying, really, the whole process is about as complicated as going to the bank and setting up a a bank account. Right. So. Right. It's which, not that which is pretty awesome. It is awesome uh, because but you I know, don't have to actually go down to the bank. I don't well, <laughs> actually have to go through that. Like right, but if you if you were in what, back in 2012 when I was in, uh, it was there was a lot more to it than that. As I said, there's <laughs> layers of of difference between your experience with this and mine, and yeah, I think that's why yeah. it's really cool to do this. It's because For not sure. only am I just in, it's, it's but I believe you have a completely different perspective on crypto than i do even though we kind of see it as the same thing i think right pretty similar anyways yeah our background in it is is pretty different right and, so and i would just want people to know it's that good like... to good to have you here to to let other people just like you uh kind of get that perspective from you so yeah and we basically built on the fact of like where i am today and that this this thing is much of anything it is to me it's hope for a, a a better tomorrow and it's hope for so many other people it's like this can be utilized by anybody that chooses to adopt and and again where we are so new to this um where we are um ahead of the game even now getting into this space if you adopt early while there still is volatility there is that that hope that this can be a liaison to that time freedom that i'm ultimately after yeah and so what is hope worth and to me man this has done something for me that nothing has ever done in my life i i'm with you in that boat because before before crypto and bitcoin i didn't have any hope for retiring like i didn't i didn't kick into my 401k or anything my job offered because i was living pretty much i mean i wasn't living paycheck to paycheck but i was i was trying to better my situation through what i was doing at the time i wasn't planning investing or doing anything for my future other than what i was trying to build myself basically i, I want to press on that because so many people are in that same boat where they're treading water you might not be living paycheck to paycheck but you actually might in you're your own putting mind. a ton of work into staying in the same spot right <laughs> right you're just it's, trying not to lose ground. Yeah. And so when somebody says to me, like, I just don't have time to like figure this whole thing out. And it's like, well, I, I dare challenge you and say, you don't not have time. If you're in that, if you're really in that place in your life right now, this is the time to take some time because number one, it's not that technical. It's really not, you know, if you want to learn how to, to build a blockchain and build a cryptocurrency, yeah, it's going to get technical, right? But the work that work is done. I need to to know how to put my key in the car, turn it on, and put it in drive. I know it, it's as simple as that. Like, I don't need to build the motor. Don't I don't need to, to rebuild the ship. You need to have a base understanding of, of, of this, and, and that is not that technical. So, um, so many people are in that space of just so overwhelmed with their life, their bills, their kids, their families, their problems, their where it's part of the design of the system in my opinion that hey keep these people well good and distracted so they can't look behind the curtain and bitcoin forced my hand to look behind the curtain of staying in um you know a controlled monetary system and now we have a choice yep a way out Good stuff, man. It is good stuff. I love this. I, I love this. Yeah.
I uh, I think that's a good note to kind of wrap this up on. Um, unless you had anything else that you wanted to kind of get out there. No, man, I know I'm going to leave this and be like, I, that was that one thing I wanted. <laughs> oh no. To. Yeah. And, and if yeah. anything, I just thought, this and was... you're always welcome to come back. So that was where I was going. <laughs> I, you know, Hey, if, if people want to hear back down the road and see how this is going for me, I'd be happy to do this again. But, um, really for, for what, when you said, Hey, let's hang out and have a chat on camera. I thought, you know, what are the most important things? to go over and that's for new people to, to because I'm still new to this. Right. But look at what I can accomplish in such a short amount of time. You know, for the record, I've been in since December. Right. But <laughs> right. It, and it Which seems like what, no amount five, of time, six months, six months, six maybe. Months now. But the information is out there. We're not reinventing the wheel. There's a lot of people and amazing people in this space that want to educate because their motivations for helping somebody else get up to their feet is stabilization of this network. You know, more people adopt it, more people use it, the more, the easier it's gonna to be to transition into this space. So um, I, much like them, anything that I have learned, I'm willing to share and um, hope that I can be, you know, a, like a, a voice of reason to some people that are on the fence and also a resource to people that, hey, if you wanna reach out, by all means. Yeah, well, I'll, We'll have to have you on again for sure. That'd be be fun anytime you're in town, anyways. So, yeah. um, cheers. Cheers. And before we go, guys, it is about the end of the month. So if you haven't already donated to the sanctuary, it's um, Olive Branch Micro sanctuary or olive branch animal sanctuary and all of their information is in the description of this video go over and donate a couple dollars to those guys and we will see you in the next video bye